Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good morning. Welcome to part three of my uh, Craftsman YS 4500 lawn tractor repower project. Uh, we've made quite a lot of progress in only, in only two um, episodes, but I'm having trouble with the heads. As you know from previous two episodes, uh, the hole that the stud for the rocker arms goes into is stripped on the inside. I fabricated my own stud, cut the end with the bolt off, put it on there. But the nut that I used is not round enough to allow the rocker arm to pivot correctly. Therefore, setting it at the valve clearances of uh, four to five one thousandths, right? It's binding the rocker arms and not allowing it to pivot because instead of the OEM nut that's rounded that allows the rocker arm to pivot like that, the nut that I used is straight. So it won't allow the rocker arm to move correctly is what I'm thinking. Which is the reason why it's so hard to turn because it's too tight and it won't allow the valves to open, you know? Um, while figuring all that out, the battery died and I recharged it overnight. But then when I tested the battery again, that's a brand new Everstart battery, 230 CCA, $24.97 from Walmart. And I charged it overnight and then when I tested the voltage, it was only like 12.2. It should be like 13.2, you know what I mean? So I'm thinking maybe that battery is not very good, you know? I put a, the uh, desulfator on there overnight right let it desulfate for a day now i put the charger back on there to recharge it again see if we get over 12.5 12.6 uh volts if not i'm gonna have to go back to walmart and return it or exchange it for another one because this battery doesn't seem like it's uh it's any good you know at least after we drained it from testing uh, anyway today i'm gonna have to fix something else i'm gonna try to make a rounded nut so that it goes in like that and allows the rocker arm to pivot correctly otherwise i can't start this engine also when we were running this the other day to test this was before i messed with the uh, head right uh but it was running very rough because um it just wasn't reliable you know what i mean um i noticed that the muffler that i put on here the plate the round plate that was on the other side of the muffler popped off from the testing from the pressure I guess and so there's a huge hole it, it's made that way so it's a, it's a it's a OEM hole that big on that side and it's, it's as, as if you don't have a muffler on it's so loud but today I'm gonna weld a plate on there to cover it so I went to the back uh, shed and I have this engine fin isolator um, cover and it's made out of pretty heavy you know steel you know um and I, I think we could just i never i save them but i never sell them you know nobody ever wants them so and they take up so much room in the shed so i just whipped one out and this one looks like a nice size plate where i could just cut it here cut it there weld this on to cover the hole you know that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna Remove this muffler, let it drop, and I'll show you the hole in a second. There's the gasket. And here's the muffler that I fabricated. Um, I cut one with the right bend from another, welded it onto here so that it would fit. This part has the exhaust pipe that goes out, call it a tailpipe. And this side over here had had another, I don't know, I want to say it's, uh, I don't know, maybe that was another exhaust pipe too, but it's like super loud, you know? So I don't know, uh, should I should I do that? Because I think this is meant to be an exhaust exit, you know? But either way, it's loud. So I'm just going to uh, cover this up with a plate. And it doesn't look like this is very secure either. I mean, I could see, I could see a gap in between here where stuff would fly out, you know, yeah. especially here. See it, it's 
really in there. I think I should try to bolt it down a little bit more and maybe I'll weld it. You know, just to cover up the gaps in here so that the muffler would work that, that it should, you know, as it should. Uh, then I'm going to remove this cowling, which is just sitting here. Stick on here. And it's very tight. I mean, I can barely turn this, with, turn this with my hand, you know, on the compression stroke. And even regular, you know, it's very difficult. So I think I gotta mess with the, um, the screw, the stud nut that holds the, I think that stopped at center. And I remove this again and uh, mess with that, fabricate some kind of a more rounded nut to get on to hold the rocker arm on the uh, intake side. So now we're gonna do some welding. I like welding, it's fun. That's right, I'm doing it in my flip-flops too. So what? I know, it's very dangerous. Not dangerous if you know what you're doing. Not that I know what I'm doing. Just gotta be careful, that's all. Ooh, ooh, hot, hot. Here we go. Hot, hot, hot. Here we go. Just cover up that hole like that. You know what I mean? A couple of tack welds. We'd be good to go. Okay. But first, I'm going to try to bolt that in a little bit more. See if we need to weld around here. That's not it. Quarter inch. much better now but still look like we need to bring that in a little bit. see any gaps but I might try to go around here anyway just to practice my welding just for the hell of it you know and then clean this up a little bit and then weld that plate on there so I'm just gonna tack this on I should wear a mask.
So there you go. I am getting better. It works better when you uh, wear a mask. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I mean, it looks all right, you know. Hey, as long as it works, you know what I mean? Yeah. Gonna remove this valve cover for like the 19th time. Just need to get the right head, you know what I mean? Well, this is the right head, it's just it's a hinky head. I looked on eBay for these heads. They're all like 50 bucks. I can find an old engine somewhere around this area for 50 bucks. And if this doesn't work, that's probably what I'll end up doing. What, Henry spend money? No way. It's only because it's a decent tractor and if I just need an engine for it, you know, it might be worth it. I bet some of you guys are saying, no, Henry, it's definitely worth it, okay? <laughs> Probably. Anyway, so let's see. This is probably the... No, this is probably right. But look, this is not moving at all. So this is stuck. This I know is, is right. I'm trying to get top dead center, and it, it's around here. You can feel it. Yeah, that's it right there. That's top dead center. I've done it so many times, I just know. <laughs> and this is not, there's no relief whatsoever. So something's up with this for sure. And the only way I could uh, loosen or tighten it is this way. So I'm going to loosen it and it moves freely. And now it's moving, see? It's still kind of tight over there. And I think that might have done it, but it, it's loose though, you know? It'll keep moving. I'm gonna find another bolt to put on there so it won't back, back, back out again. I found another nut that fits on there and it's low profile. I'm gonna put a dab of uh, red Loctite there just so it won't back out again. I don't know how effective that is because it's oily. This is an area where there's a lot of heat and oil. And this is the only way I can get it on. I don't know how tight I can get this nut on either, you know. But better than nothing, you know. It's a fabricated <laughs> head stud for the rocker arms. It's a thicker nut, uh, thicker stud that would fit correctly into the hole that's stripped, you know. It basically made its own new um, threads. And it's tight on there. So this is the best I can do. It's it's fabricating it to work, but I'm gonna try it anyway, you know. That's actually pretty good. So that shouldn't go anywhere. It shouldn't. Still pretty tight though, I don't understand why. It's good after the compression stroke. And you see, now it moves and pivots normally before it wasn't even moving. I just have to back it up a little.
All right, that's good enough. That's it. And if this doesn't work, that's it. I've had it. Uh, I'm not going to work on this anymore. Uh, if this all fails, I'm going to take this engine off and put that command on there and just mess with that a little bit. That command just has timing issues. Uh, it could be that the cam is plastic and maybe the lobes are rounded off. Or it could be the valves not seating correctly in the head. So I think I might have to take the head off and inspect the valves. Whether or not they're seating properly, you know. That could be the problem with that. Uh, another anticipated long series, guys. Gonna have to wait until this battery charges fully. Muffler uh, dries out, um, cools down, I mean. And we'll try to give this thing a start. I don't have any high hopes. And that's kind of stripped. I wish I didn't sell that head. I had a head to this. But look, some guy was going to give me 50 something dollars for it, so sold it. Money's money, you know what I mean? Got the muffler back on here again. Tight. And now secure. Let's uh, put that cover back on. Very easy, actually. If any of you guys got a Color Courage head <laughs> sitting around doing nothing that you think may help my project, I'd really appreciate you contributing to the channel. All right. Should we uh, try turning it? Just for shits and giggles. not strong enough or maybe I'll swap out a battery I got another battery because I bought two this one worked for a while until I was testing it and now it just doesn't really work. Here's the identical battery. It says 621, which is a couple months old. We'll put this on now. That way we can test it. All right, got a new battery in here, for goodness sakes. Let's give it a turn.
Okay. Oh, wow. It runs, uh, but not very fast. And it's running too rich. As you can see from the glowing muffler, right? That was highest throttle. And when you lowered it, it didn't change any of the speed. So, um, I don't know. It, it's got valve issues. You know, I definitely need a new head. Uh, that's the fastest it'll go in, in terms of RPM. So, um, the valves are definitely hinky over here. It's letting out too much gas or the exhaust is not opening up fast enough. You know, it, it's one of those. So, um, I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, maybe you guys could tell me, but uh, I don't think this thing will run right without a new head. So it kind of runs, right? Let's just test and see if it um, moves forward and backwards. I'm gonna engage the uh, transmission. It's pulled out in the back. Start it up and see if it moves forward and backwards, at least. some action for you so we know the transmission works it's a sound tractor with a brand new deck pretty much I painted it I just need a reliable engine for this I've got a 12.5 Briggs flathead that has bad valves in it and uh, has no compression so it's just sitting there I've been waiting for a long, a long time for maybe uh, some new valves or something, but um, I don't think it'll start. It has low compression, you know. Uh, the other Kohler Command that I have has timing issues, and it won't start no matter what happens. Just crackles and pops and stuff. And uh, we have this one here that has a bad head. So I've got three spare engines, but none of them really work right. So I might just abandon this project for a while until I find another engine. Maybe I'll just forget about those three and <clears throat> strip them all for parts and just start fresh, you know. I might try to remove this, put the command on there, check out the valves and the camshaft. Short of that, I just don't think this is going to run right without a new head, you know. And I'm not going to pay 50 bucks for a head because... I can go find an engine somewhere for 50 bucks, you know? Anyway, that's my episode today. Fixing the muffler, although it's still loud. <laughs> uh, you saw the, it glowing because there's too much fuel going in there, you know? So that's a valve issue. Like I said, we have a bad head, you know? Uh, other than that, I think it's a good tractor, you know what I mean? Just needs an engine. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me on this brief series failure series of getting these engines to work. Uh, see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, 
paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.